Welcome to Buckets. My name's Matt Moore. I'm the senior NBA writer of the Action Network. This is your Friday workshop for the three NBA playoff games that we have on tap. Glad to have you with us. Want to let you know that if you're going to be in Vegas next week, the week of the NFL draft, you absolutely need to check out the special Action Network event. Action Network is hosting a pre-NFL draft happy hour at Circa Stadium Swim in downtown Las Vegas next Wednesday, April 27th. They've got an open bar, surprise guests, and betting tips from some of your favorite action pros. The event is 21 plus, and it's totally free, but it does require an RSVP. So if you're in Vegas next week, just check out the link in this episode description to RSVP. I've got with me professional better Raheem Palmer, who's hanging in as the playoffs continue to beat him up because he's not sleeping enough. And I've got Brandon Anderson, NBA futures analyst, who's here with a whole bunch of victory laps to take on a number of subjects. But we're going to break down the three Friday night NBA games. Just so you know, on Friday's episode, uh, you'll have this on Friday afternoon. We're going to do like a big breakdown of the weekend's games. And it's going to go long. We're going to break down that Celtics and like all of that, a lot of complicated stuff, get you ideas about future angles on all of this stuff. Lots to kind of break down. Today, we're going to focus on these three games that we got on tap for Friday. So let's go ahead and break this down. Starting with, we got to talk about the news of the night. The Milwaukee Bucks are taking on the Chicago Bulls. Two-day turnaround after the Bucks drop game two. I trusted them to, once again, minus 10. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Milwaukee keeps hurting my feelings very badly, but the bigger news is that Chris Middleton suffered an MCL sprain. We're recording this on Thursday at 1 o'clock Eastern. Uh, we don't have details of the MRI yet. Okay, we will probably talk about the, those results on tomorrow's show. That injury is pretty significant. Jeff Stotts, great, great injury reporter. I think this is going to be about three to six weeks on average. If it comes back as a full tear, which technically a sprain is a small tear, but anyway, like if it comes back that it's going to need surgery, he's done. So the Bucks gambled with their roster saying we need more size to battle and bead. So they liquidated their wing depth, gave up Dante DiVincenzo, Gave up Rodney Hood, who I honestly think could have helped. Got Serge Ibaka, who's not playing right now much at all. And now they could be without Chris Middleton. This is really, 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 really bad for the Milwaukee Bucks. It's also really, really, really bad for me, as I have included the Bucks in so many, so many bets. Eastern Conference, finals, playoff, like finals matchups series for all sorts of things it's bad the chicago bulls brandon chicago bulls are plus one and a half at home still he reps his bulls jersey after saying the bulls would never win a playoff game in <laughs> after trading for nikola vucevic um early bets 83 percent of the tickets are on the bucks but 67 percent of the money is on the bulls in the action network app it's early but that's a pretty stark differential. This open three and a half, it's minus one and a half right now. Brandon, I, I know you're going to want to talk about Bucks futures. I want to, I want you to focus on the game first. So what's your take on this game in particular, given how games one and two have gone? Yeah, I, I think that the line is right that this, this feels like a toss up. Look, one thing that has really stood out and honestly has surprised me in games one and two, that crowd, that, that was a partisan crowd. Like there are a lot of Bulls fans that made the two hour drive to Milwaukee and the Bulls fans were allowed there. What happens when the Bulls finally have a team that they believe in and the fans get to get in front of the United Center, get, get all the guys home now believing no Middleton, like surely he's not going to play in game three. I think we have to at least expect that the, the line expects that. And the way that the Bulls got the win the way that they have hung in through the two games. I don't think you know, I talked to a lot of fans in the area and there wasn't a lot of hope coming into the series. So it's kind of like, well, we had fun back in the fall, didn't we though? <laughs> and I think there's a little hope now you get the win. You got a couple home games here. It, it feels really like a toss up here. So 
I, I don't know that I have a, a strong lean on the game because it just feels so unknown. Like the, the Bucks are so shorthanded right now. It's not just Middleton. Like Ibaka played one minute in, in game two. So that's not part of the rotation. George Hill is still hurt. And like, I realize it's problematic if you're bringing up George Hill, but we're bringing up George Hill. It matters for this team. Bobby Portis left hurt and played under 10 minutes last game. We know Bobby loves playing in Chicago. So that would be a big mess if he is limited or out at all. They're just, they're running out of bodies. Like they basically have their few stars left. And, and like that, I'm trying to talk myself into like, well, maybe they should start Grayson Allen and get some more scoring out there because they don't seem to shoot very well. And they just lost their best three-point shooter. Maybe they need a little more from Pat Connaughton. Like these are the options that we've come to. We did this last year. I remember I tried to talk you guys into Jordan War last year. I was like, well, maybe Jordan War can come and do some stuff. It just, to me, I think this for me is going to be more of a prop spot. I lean bucks here just because I'm not ready to just immediately bail entirely. But I think the only way you can lean bucks is if Giannis just is a superhero and he can be. And that's why it's still hard to totally count them out. But I think it's a spot where if you like the Bucs, you just have to like Giannis and you have to play the points. You have to play the rebounds. You have to figure huge minutes. You got to play the overs, the alternate overs. I think for me, that's probably the angle or you just go in on DeMar and the Bulls on the other side. But I think the props is, is maybe the best way to go. Uh, we'll talk tomorrow. You have a very specific angle that you want to play from a futures perspective based off of this news. We'll talk about that on tomorrow's show. Uh, there's a report, I, just as you were talking on uh, Twitter, a reporter out of Milwaukee, Dario uh, Melendez, uh, WISN 12 News Sports Director in Milwaukee, says being told Middleton's out three to four weeks. So okay. that's going to like this series for sure. Probably next series might be back for conference finals. Uh, it is, I think it's very easy at this point to be like the bucks are toast. That's it. It's over. Um, I want to, I want to pause on it. Cause I, I need to think about it some more. I understand how obvious that seems. I don't like obvious angles in the NBA playoffs. Just oftentimes a bunch of things surprise us. Like it's just one of those things. The other thing I would say is like, um, what they're going to do now is, is they're going to have to play Grayson Allen more. And honestly, Grayson's been pretty good this year. I do actually, it's funny. You mentioned Jordan Nora. I didn't like Jordan Nora last year. I actually really liked the way Jordan Nora has played this year. And yeah, I'm not saying like, it's good, good, but I also think that you need like a very low bar versus this bulls offense. Like congratulations. Costco Kobe moved up to, to target Kobe last night with DeMar. But I, <laughs> I, I am still going to kind of be like, mm, DeMar's going to have to show it to me for an entire series before I start buying in Raheem. Yeah. I'm very interested to get your thoughts on this because this is a super like, like don't, you know, keep it simple, stupid, just bet against the bucks without Chris Middleton versus is there contrarian value here on Milwaukee? What do you think in this one? I'm really struggling with this one. I think this is one I really have to think about too, just because I didn't expect Middleton to be out three to four weeks. Um, I think the, the thing that stands out to me is that, the Bucs have an offensive rating in this series of just 101. And Middleton was in the lineup for that. Now, I know Grayson has been solid, but I'm wondering how do they defend the, the wings of the, of the Bulls without Middleton? I mean, obviously, you still have Drew, but I think that changes this series so much because now you got to deal with DeRozan and Levine and – I don't know how they do it. So I'm trying to figure out, does inserting Grayson for more minutes, does that mean that we're going to see a Bulls offensive explosion? Um, are we seeing more overs than unders um, just based on his presence? Because I, I think Middleton is, I mean, he adds a defensive presence that, and an offensive presence that the, the Bucks missed so much. So I think the plus 220 on the Bulls is a little bit too high. Like, that's just way series too price? high. Yeah, the series price. Like, there's no way in the world you should be able to remove – you remove Middleton and 
this line is like I think we should be closer to a pick. Now I know the Bucks made that run at the end of the game, but we are what boy we are overreacting. Uh, I get it. I get it. I think Chris Middleton's really good, but we're talking about a series that we all thought was a sweep. And in in some ways we were wrong because the Bucks offense isn't doing anything. Right. But here's my question for you. The Bucks didn't offense didn't do anything versus in the first three games versus the Nets either. Like, and, and then Kyrie Irving got hurt. Do, do you think the bulls are genuinely stopping them outside, outside of Alex Caruso? Very good. Very good defensive player. Good. By the way, uh, Alice Caruso stocks over. You can find that all over yeah, the place. Steals play and, that and, one too. Yeah. Just, just takes, just take the stocks like rebounds is good, but stocks I think is, I love stocks for Caruso. He yeah. just picks them up. Um, I mean, look, I, I was, I've been wrong on the box twice. So maybe that that's just like, I, I'm not going to bet it. That's like, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, I trusted the Bucks twice. I've been burned twice. So I'll stay away from it. And if you guys want to go bulls, I won't argue. I, I worry a lot. Like the gap between these two teams is significant. Bulls played great for two games and the Bucks played shitty for two games. If we get back to average performances, even without mid. But to me, it's, it's, it's not like, well, you know, what Middleton was going to have 22 points. We're going to have to find those points somewhere. It's just, it's the cumulative effect. Like, it's not that Middleton is this amazing defender, He's but good. replacing that in the lineup with Grayson Allen, like they're going to hunt Grayson every time that Grayson's on the court. If, if he's getting scored, yeah, but they're not going to switch though, them. Brandon, but Brandon, they're not going to switch. Like they're not going to switch it, but who's, who's matter. Grayson going to guard like somebody he's going to have to guard somebody and they're, they're just going to hunt him. I think. Yeah. But like, <clears throat> so, but, but here's, here's my question though. Like if, okay. Can the bulls win this game just with isolate with mid range isolations? Can they win a series that way? That's literally that is, what they've won all season that way. No, no, but that, that's, that's the a regular fair point. season for that, sure, that, buddy. That, that, that's yeah, a the fair regular point. season for sure. Can they that's do it in the playoff point. series for four games? That's, that's a, that's a totally fair point because that's one of the reasons why I like the Bucks coming into this series because yeah. the Bulls simply don't shoot enough threes. Yeah. Like, and like when you look at game two, the Bulls were 12 of 25 from three and the Bucks were 14 of 36. Now I know the Bulls shot a higher, they, they, they shot a higher percentage, but at some point they still have a math problem. So it's but like. It's really, Raheem, just let's take a second and celebrate how funny it is that Brandon's like hyped, like drinking Bulls, Bulls Gatorade right now. Like he's drinking the, the Bulls punch after Count is how much he dogged this team. Yeah. But, excuse me. I, this is not drinking the Gatorade. Do not put words in my mouth. I just think like the, the box need like we've every playoff series we watch, what we see is when you run out of guys that can play both ways, that's it's fair. a problem. Yeah, and fair. the box just lost a guy that can play every minute they have offense and defense and not take things off the table. They're just running out of options there. So to me, I, Matt, I think you're underestimating what the loss is. And I don't think that this is curtains like, well, the Bucs are just done. They'll be like, you win another game. No, I, I think the series is much closer to even. I think the series price, I think it's, I think it's maybe about right. I, I think there might be a little value on the Bulls, but I'm not like running to bet Chicago right now. The, the Bucks still have Giannis. And for a while, just that. Against the Bulls, just Giannis probably is enough. It's the attrition thing that I'm yeah. worried about because yeah. I think now we're looking at not a sweep, now we're looking at a very real scenario where this series goes six or seven, yeah. and suddenly the 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 box are the team with the rest disadvantage in the next round. The Celtics are up 2-0. Suddenly they're the team with a disadvantage. Now Middleton comes back, maybe like game three or four, but is playing limited role. If he comes back even then, Giannis, by the way, is playing like 44 minutes a game doing everything. And maybe Giannis can just do that forever. We don't know. We, he kind of did last year. But like at some point, all of that, like even if the Bucs keep winning right now and they might, all of what's going to have to happen right now to get there is going to carry so much mileage later on. Like even then you beat the Celtics or Nets, you outlasted the Bulls. You finally got Middleton back. He's still not 100%. 
Giannis is worn down from a month of doing literally everything and you still have to play two more really hard series to win a title. For sure. So to me, it's, it's, that's the long-term thing is like, I don't think that this sunk them against the Bulls in game three or in the series. I think that the, the box for me went from my Eastern favorite to, I, I could talk myself into them being fifth in the East to come out of the East right now, I think yeah. is a huge drop off. Yeah. I mean, I look, I, I think mid's hugely important. Um, yeah. Look, I don't want to go down this road because I don't want I don't want anybody to get hurt. I don't want anybody to get hurt. I'm just saying we got more grace than Allen in the playoff series. Y'all better tape the bulls up tight. Oh. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm concerned. And like that's a, something that can honestly like that's a real possibility, and that's something that could they could flip a series. Like I just I would be worried. Like I'm I, I get concerned when Grayson plays more minutes. Um what yeah. what what would you guys do? If, so the box obviously are having a hard time scoring and now they just lost Middleton. They need even more points. They need also the lack of his spacing out there. I think is going to be problems for Giannis. So, so what's, what's the lineup adjustment? Is it just it's more not, Grayson well, Allen? What would no, you do? Like, look, here's the thing. Shot quality. Like, I don't know what else to do here. I don't know what else to do here. I, you don't watch the box. If you go back and you watch the tape, you don't go, that's a bad shot. That's a bad shot. That's a bad shot. You yeah, go, that's yeah. a really I, good shot. Yeah. Why didn't you I, make I that? agree with all of that, but all of that is now irrelevant because Middleton played most of game two. Right. But like Drew, so, if Drew Holiday turns back into Drew Holiday, you're fine. But Holiday has never been a knockdown shooter. He's not getting the respect that Middleton is to like, that's, it's another accumulation where without Middleton out there, the defense can be a half step closer to the rim and make life a little harder on Giannis that way. So that's what I'm asking is, do, do you try Brooke Lopez? Like, it seems like, well, they have to play Brooke because they just need, they need the guys that can play. Do you try to go Giannis at center and space it out, bring yeah. Grayson out there, bring whatever these yeah. wings that they have left and yep. you need to find the scoring. I think that's the move, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I would go, I would go center. I would go Giannis at center and switch everything is what I would do. It limits your, it, it limits your yeah. liability. Play a little so bit of aura, th- get through it. Like Wes is getting cooked, but Wes will Wes will probably have a good game here at some point. Yeah, and that's probably. Well, the thing is, like Brooke Lopez is a rim protector, yep. but Vooch and Damar are just shooting over anyways. So I feel like that's not necessarily going to break your defense. They're going to make yeah. those shots. They're going to make them. Well, so, yeah. I, yeah, but like, that's I, I feel like Brooke Lopez unders and Vooch overs. Like if Brooke is off, then Vooch is going to get his chances. So I feel mm-hmm. like that's kind of where I'm leaning on that one. Well, Vooch is getting his chances anyway because Brooke's not going to cover him at three point range. So yeah, yeah, um, definitely keep yeah. playing the threes. By the way, I, I think Brooke unders maybe might be a play, and maybe like look that that switch move might backfire because then they can't, they can't hunt Grayson. Um, but I think we're all in agreement here that we like. Is anybody going to bet game three? Is anybody going to bet the side or total on game three? It's totals 230, 223 and a half. Kind of like the under a little bit there, Raheem. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning that way as well. Um, look, if this number, I mean, this number's going up on, <laughs> on the Bucks. I think if it keeps going up, I might have to put something on Chicago. I, I, to me, I just think. What do you mean the number's going up on, on, on the Bucks? Yeah, like it was one and a half, and then I see twos in the market. Uh, well, it was three and a half at open. Um, oh really okay yeah we'll see like you know i mean so is two a buy point is two and a half a buy point for you on chicago um don't you just want to play the money line there yeah i think i, I think i would just play the money are you gonna this, are you gonna bet it i, I need i kind of need to think this all right, through, we'll, I'm gonna be honest with you. all right we'll follow you in the action app and brandon you're you're a no play on side total just gonna play props yeah i think i'm a no play my, my play is this is the spot before game three to bet your Eastern future. Like be- before the Bucks possibly lose a game three, this is a spot to bet your Eastern future. Um, okay. Well, we'll talk about this tomorrow on Friday on like the Friday morning show. So you should be able to catch it before that game. So okay. we'll talk, let's, we got to keep going here. Okay. Um, sure. Let's go to, to Hawks heat. I think this series is fascinating. Oh, by the way, on Bucks. I lean Bucks, but do not trust me because I'm 0-2 versus the Bucks. I have too much faith in them. So, like, you might just want to fade me with Milwaukee and just bet against – just bet the Bulls because I apparently I've, I no – well, no matter what I think, the Bucks are always going to underperform. Uh, all right, Heat Hawks. Heat are one-and-a-half favorites. It hasn't moved. Open 220. It's a 221-and-a-half on, to- on the total. 82% of the tickets on Miami, 75% of the money on Miami, so a little bit of an edge towards Atlanta. I think I'm betting Atlanta. 
uh, I will make the case really quickly. The John Collins moving game two worked. They, it took Jimmy Butler with a career high, a career high 45 and four made threes and a whole bunch of other things. There are still adjustments that they can make. A lot of this is like, again, this gets into the whole coaching question of, can you trust a coach to make the adjustments? If McMillan gets them out of drop with Collins, like you're playing Collins, you can drop. You're like, you don't have to drop now. Just switch it. Just switch things, man. Because when they're switching, the Heat are scoring, the literal drop in effective field goal percentage is 20%. They are killing their soft coverage, which it makes sense. If you leave, if you give the Heat drop coverage where the guard comes over the pick and he just gets to basically make a read or shoot, if you make, the, like, you don't want the Heat having to make systemic decisions. That's where they're great. Make them beat you one-on-one. And so if they go to that, I think that they can slow down this heat offense, especially in Atlanta, where Raheem, I'm sure, is going to talk about how good Atlanta has been at home compared to how shitty they've been on the road. Uh, I think the Heat have played well, but the Hawks honestly had a really terrible first half of game one, and they had a really bad last 10 minutes of game two. And other than that, they've played real well. So... I, I don't think that Atlanta is going to make this a long series. I kind of think that the Heat are going to win game four and be able to close it out at home. But, and I hate that where I'm only getting a, a point and a half. Like, I'm not going to get a good number on this. I'm going to wait and see if I can, with the, the tickets coming in on Miami and the, the majority, I'm hoping the books will finally relent and move this to two, two and a half, and then I'll bet Atlanta. But that's my angle for game three, Raheem, as I like Atlanta. I'm laying a point and a half with the Atlanta Hawks in the first half. Um, it's crazy that they're underdogs for the for the game and <laughs> one and a half point favorites for the first half. But I got to go with that home team's down 0-2 angle, which is 33-10, and 33-10-1 at 77%. We saw the Toronto Raptors come out like world beaters in the first half, first quarter, and they got it done. And we know this Hawks team, they're absolutely dominant at home. This is a team that – on the road, they really, really struggle. I mean, this is a team, when you look at their home road splits are very, very damning. I mean, this is a team right now, I think, what are they? They're 27 and 14 straight up at home, 16 and 25 in the regular season on the road. And on the road, they actually haven't covered a game in which they lost. So I think you're looking at two different teams, home road, road. I think that that home teams down 0-2 split. I mean, um, trend has worked out really, really well. And I think this is the spot to take it. I'm hoping they play Herder less. So here's a question for you, Brandon, on a prop, and we can get your mm-hmm. side in total too. Um, mm-hmm. The lineups with Herder have basically been annihilated. Like Herder has been their problem. Like very specifically, he's been their problem. Like Bogdanovich has really bad numbers. He has good numbers when Herder's not on the floor. Collins has bad numbers. Collins has good numbers when Herder's not on the floor. If they just play DeLon right, they are they are doing really well. So uh, I like an obvious adjustment would be to play Herder less. I just don't know if McMillan's going to get there. I think there's going to be like a – McMillan seems much more like the coach to be like, we're going home. We're going to play our game. Our guys will shoot better. We need the shooting. we got to be able to put up threes. I'm not going to take out Kevin. But like that to me seems like a, an adjustment to make. Um, what do you think about that, about that prop? And then what do you think about the side in total? Yeah, I, I'm with you, but unfortunately I'm with you on both sides of that. Like, I agree that, you know, Bogdanovich, I'd love to see a little more Bogdanovich, a little less herder, but I would have loved to see that for a lot of the season. And we keep not necessarily seeing it. Like they just, they're, they're sticking with herder. So I, I think that's one of the ones that you talk about not trying to get ahead of, of, the angle. And I, I feel like on that one, we got to wait maybe until we actually see it because I'm not so confident that that switch is going to be coming or that the minutes are going to go away. Um, and even if they do, it might come like second half of the game where it's just not enough to, to play a huge role. But yeah, I, I was trying to debate between kind of the, the, the sides that both of you took. Do I, it, it seemed like an Atlanta spot. They're O2, but it hasn't been as bad as it looked. They've had one really rough stretch each game. All the stuff that you said, I agree with the home road split. It's not just Atlanta. Miami was 29 and 12 at home. That's best in the East. The heat we know even in past playoffs has been a team that has not been as good 
on the road. Like they're, the heat role players don't hit shots quite as well on the road as they do at home too. I mean, that's, that's every role player, but the heat especially has stood out that way. So it's not just that the home road switch favors Atlanta, but that it takes away from the heat as well. Yeah. So I, I'm debating Atlanta for the game or Atlanta first half. I was thinking Atlanta. I'm like you said, Matt, you've been on Milwaukee. And so maybe fade your position here. I've been on Atlanta and it's not working out for me. So I'm kind of feeling similarly, but I do feel better about the first half. I think than for the game, I I don't know if I trust this team uh, to still take this to six or longer. Like I thought they'd be able to, because they're just, unfortunately you get that bad five or 10 minute stretch. That's enough. In in a playoff game against a team like Miami, that's enough. And you just can't win then. And I don't know when that stretch comes, but I think the first half angle is a little safer play. And that way I don't have to worry about what happens late. Uh, I'm playing Trey young props. Trey it's, it's a little tenuous because I'm going against Trey and he's at home and it's a spot where the superstar has to come out and perform, but the numbers for Trey against Miami just haven't been good. Last game, 25 points, six rebounds, seven assists. Like those are good. Those are just not good enough for Trey. When you lead the league in points and assists for the season, he's under his 39.5 point rebound assist number in five of six Miami games. Now this season, both playoff games and even better, you got to play the turnovers. Trey had 10 turnovers last game, 10. He had six in game one. He has uh, for the season against Miami, He's averaging 6.5 turnovers per game. His line is at 4.5, has not moved up. So you have to play the turnovers here. Uh, It's just, there's going to be mistakes. And even the more that he presses, the more the mistakes will come. So it's hard for me to bet Atlanta on the game and fade Trey Young. That's, That's kind of a tough dissonance there to try to do both. So I think I may be Atlanta first half with Raheem and then fading Trey with some of those props. Let me make a a counter argument here. Not for the combined over, just for rebounds and assists. So Trey struggles versus switch coverage, which is all the heat are going to run. And that makes sense, right? Bigger defenders, able to stay in his airspace, going to contest. His shot selection is always a little. So I don't mind the uh, points under on him. Hmm. From a rebounds perspective, if we think like, home home yeah. t- home role players shoot better road role players shoot worse just yeah. a higher volume of rebounds available from a lower percentage from miami could bump up those rebounds and if we think the home players are going to shoot better a higher assist percentage combined with trey's a willing passer and i think that they're the the heat are likely to be to keep sending the kind of covers that they have at him and so from, from that perspective, I kind of like rebounds and assists over for Trey and just keep points out of it. If you want to go points under and just play that angle, but I, I would worry about points, rebounds, assist combined, because if he does have fewer turnovers, those probably convert into assists or points. Um, now you might be right. And they just keep causing turnovers on him, but I, because of his usage, I still kind of feel like the rebounds assist over might be worth a play. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, the rebounds with the guard, his size, you just never know with the rebounds. So I don't mind just leaving that out. Like I can see that your argument makes sense there. The assists I want to fade though, because he's played six games against Miami this season. He hasn't had double digit assists in any of those games. He has eight, seven, nine, five, four, and six assists. And what's the, the, what's four, the line on him? What was the line last game on him? It was eight and a half, which is a bummer. Cause I was all set to fade, fade that. And then they really pushed the line down. He was at like 10 and a half for a lot of the season. So it's, I don't know. You can really, I mean, he is under eight and a half, all but one of those games. So if you just want to go with the assist, you can just do it that way. And the upside of that is you might be able to go under on the assist, even if he has a good game, because he could have a good game scoring like 38 and just not have the assist. Huh. So that might be the way if, if you just want to fade the playmaking and not, I, I, I agree. Don't worry about the rebounds. Like for me, when I do a point rebound assist, it's just, if I'm taking the under, like usually if I do a PRA, I'm doing the under, and I'm just wanting, give me the highest line possible. I'm just expecting this guy to not post a big game. So give me the highest line and let him do less stuff. All right. Rebounds and assists is 12 and a half. Okay. How many, how many assists do you, th- do you expect from him? 
So he's averaging 6.7 assists a game against Miami this year, but the minutes you, are going to be you think there. He'll be above or below that number in this game. I, I would put him. I would certainly put him above 6.7. I'll, I'll say, I'll say seven or eight, probably eight assists, which is why it's hard to play that under. Okay, so he needs five or more rebounds in that in that perspective. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. We'll be. I, I think I'm going to play it. We'll see. I, it'll be a fun one. We can go head to head on this and and figure out which one of us goes. Um. Okay. So. Raheem's with me on he's he's on Atlanta first half. Brandon, are you gonna bet Atlanta first half or are you just gonna stay away from side? I think I'll play the first half. Okay. Uh I will probably he'll you guys are on, on first half. I'll go first half with you and jinx you. And then I'll take uh Atlanta money line full game. It's 106. Hopefully I get a better number and I'll bet it again. Uh last game of the night. We actually have some news breaking on this. Uh Brian Winhorst of ESPN reports Devin Booker is gonna miss two to three weeks with a grade one hamstring strain. So that's not as bad as it could be, right? Like could be back for the conference finals, which I think is when they're going to need him. The lot, lot of love for the Pels right now. Just like this Pelicans team is tough. And they're, like, they're really good. And like, you don't, and that atmosphere is going to be crazy in new Orleans. The new, the Pels have already announced sellouts for games three and four. Suns are one and a half point favorites. Totals down at two sixteen and a half. Brandon. Let's start side total. Do you have anything that you want to play on this? I love the Suns here. I I am not convinced that the Pelicans are like Raheem. I know thinks that the Pelicans have a real chance to win the series. I I, I can't get there. The Suns have all season long played shorthanded with any number of guys. This is not new to them. They specifically went out and got Landry Shamit to be a like for like replacement for Booker if they needed to. Like he's not Booker. Let's be real. But the skill set and the way they play, he. He's the guy I think that's going to start. He started all the games basically when Booker was out this year. So before the last week of the season, obviously when the Suns were just resting, the Suns were eight and three without Devin Booker, but that's fine. And by the way, three and one of that was no Chris Paul either. And down to Aiden missed a couple of games. Like this just, this isn't new for the Suns. They've been missing these guys all season. And that's why I was wrong during the season. I kept waiting for things to tail off and it just didn't. They just keep winning. So I'm not that worried about it personally in this series. That news is worrisome because that's probably most or all of next series too. And now we're kind of on not so far from the Middleton time frame and that whole question again. But the attrition is not quite so bad too because this is an this is a team that has you know. So let me go a different direction here. So I looked at Booker stats, uh, or not Booker stats. I looked at the stats. What what are we expecting with Booker out? Do, do we want to do, can I talk about props and, and what the numbers might look like? Or do we want to stick with the side here first? Do the side first. Okay. Yeah. So I, I love Suns here. Suns minus one and a half is definitely my favorite side of the day. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll, we'll come back to props in a second. Okay. Um, Ron, I'm very curious to, to see where you're at on this because you like the Pels. The Booker injury is, is here. That's, a, that's a, a game changer in a series, but you've been on the, the better team in game three spot. That's something you've written about. That's something you've bet. What do you think on Suns minus one and a half? If I'll be honest with you, I don't think the Suns are that much of a better team. I think I misread the Suns all year long. What? I, yeah, like I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, like I don't think that they're – look, they're a better team, but they're not vastly superior. To me, Brandon used to say this, that they don't fit the profile of like a a, a, a championship I, team. I still say that. <laughs> and I think he was right. Like I've totally missed – like – Look, I don't think the Suns have another gear. And when I say that, I say that since, look, look they're perimeter, they're perimeter-oriented team that is just 25th in three-point frequency. Like, and then they don't dominate inside. And when I see inside right now, they need Aiton to be the guy, but they don't feed Aiton, which is, like, kind of crazy. So you have a team who doesn't take a lot of threes, and granted, the Pelicans don't either. So I think that's what kind of makes them have an advantage in this series. But the Pelicans are absolutely dominating the offensive rebounds. And they're getting they're getting more shots. And I think that's a problem in this matchup where you don't have a guy like Devin Booker who can really get his own shot anytime he wants. And I love Chris Paul, but Chris Paul's getting older. And look, if he... If the Pelicans don't 
shoot under expectation in game one and Chris Paul doesn't go go off at the end, that's a dog fight. So to me, this series is like a true pick em series right now without Devin Booker. Um, I'm probably not going to play anything for game three, but I like the, I mean, at least on the side, but I like the under. Um, I mean, we saw the Pelicans, like they didn't miss a shot for the last 10 minutes of the game. And Chris, I mean, Chris didn't, the, the Suns not having Devin Booker, I feel like this is a lower scoring game. So give me the under 216. Uh, okay, I got I got to respond to the offensive rebounds thing because you brought that up a few times now. You're right. The offensive rebounding percentage was high again in game two, but don't equate game one and game two. They had 25 offensive rebounds in game one. They had 11 in game two. The percentage is high because they didn't miss shots the entire game. They didn't miss shots for like the entire last quarter. They shot 57% on threes. They shot 54% on twos. They just didn't miss shots. Like 11 offensive rebounds versus nine drastically swings that percentage and then totally takes that point away if they just happen to get like two less. So I, I don't think you can make as big a deal about the offensive rebounds as it has like game one, it was monstrous. It was huge. I feel like the Suns basically addressed that in game two. And I don't think, I mean, look, if you go, if you, if you go back to their, they played on February 25th, offensive rebound percentage, 34.8. This has been a problem for this, these two teams when they play all season long. And that game on February 25th, Chris Paul didn't play, but Devin Booker did. The Pelicans won 117, 102. So it's just, this is proof. And it, this was after the CJ trade. So CJ dropped 32 in that game. Brandon Ingram dropped 28. To me, the Pelicans have guys who can get a, they like, when you look at the Suns right now with Chris Paul, they're relying on a bunch of role guys. They don't have a guy who can get them a, a, a bucket. They, they just don't. The Pelicans got two guys. They got two guys who I trust them to get, get a bucket over anybody over the Suns right now. Okay, but do you really trust them? Because you're telling me that you think these teams are even. You're telling me you think this series is a coin flip and the Pelicans are at home and you're not willing to bet the Pelicans at home in game three and you're not willing to bet the Pelicans in the series. So that tells me you don't actually think it's a coin flip series. Ooh. It's a good point. Okay. Maybe, maybe it's like, as a, to me, it's like, I just look, it's still the Pelicans and it's still a younger team, but it's just to me, like I look at the fact that look, one side has CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram, who to me, they've proven that they're capable shot makers. And the other side has an older Chris Paul and a bunch of role players. I think this clo- this series is closer than what the market is indicating. And are you going to bet plus 225? If you think it's a coin flip series and you're getting two and a quarter, why are you going to betting? do it? What? I might have to do it. I'm like, you know, you know what? I'm no, 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 my, no, my, this is the best bet show, buddy. <laughs> I, I'm taking the Pelicans. 225 series. Oh my God. Y'all forcing me into it. Cause you know what it is. Here's the thing. I kind of want to, I, I, I want an even better price than that. <laughs> hey Raheem, I got a coin over here. I'm going to flip it. 225 for tails. <laughs> you want, you want tails? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, this will be very interesting. I mean, look, if you're right in the Suns, if you think, but you're not betting the Suns, are you betting the Suns in Game Three? I am not betting the Suns at all. Okay, you're not betting. So you're saying the are passed, basically. I, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Um, I kind of lean Phoenix. <laughs> I kind of lean Phoenix. Part of this is just like the Pels look awesome because they made all these shots right. It's kind. I don't mean to do that. It, it, yeah. yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. It's the Bulls. Like these, those two teams are very similar. It's tough shot makers made a bunch of shots. Can tough shot makers make tough shots three out of four games, like three out of five yeah. games? Like that to me is like. That- I think that I think the thing is the Suns are one of those teams that they can just out execute you, and I think that's what's keeping me off of this because they're just so good at exe- like out executing teams, and this Pelicans team is a team that can kind of just be out executed. But when I look at the fact that the Pelicans have the two best shot makers in this series right now they can take things up to another gear, which we saw in game two. All right. I need very quickly, Brandon, you cannot extrapolate. I need props from you on this, on this, on this game. 
Okay, so just quickly, I looked at the numbers. I threw out the last week of the season when Booker missed a few games, but the Suns aren't trying. So I was just trying to figure out, like, what's the angle here? Who do you play with Booker out? Where do the numbers go up? So here's the short version. Not Chris Paul. I kind of thought it'd be Chris Paul, but Chris Paul's numbers were basically the same, at least in the regular season. We're just going off the numbers here. Don Rayton went up about two points a game. Jay Crowder went up about two and a half a game. Landry Shaman, I think, is going to get the start. I don't know we're going to really see props on him. The guy that you want to play is Cameron Johnson. Cameron Johnson in nine games without Booker averaged 17.8 points a game, up from 12 and a half. So that's a huge jump. Cameron Johnson in those games, 35 three-pointers in nine games. That's 3.9 per game. He had three or more in seven of the nine. He had four or more in five of the nine. Shamit took a lot of threes, by the way. Crowder took a few more threes. Cameron Payne up two points and a couple more threes. Some of the thing are going to shoot a few more threes here with Booker out because that's the personnel they have. Don't be afraid if Cameron Johnson doesn't move into the starting line and be like, oh, shoot, I, I liked him, but he's not starting now. He's the guy that has scored a lot more for them. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. That's a great angle. Going to be, I'm going to tell you 100% on that. All right, let's go back over this uh, real quickly. I'm staying away from Bucks, Bulls. Brandon, are you on the Bulls in that game? I uh, no, I think I'm gonna stay away on that one. Raheem, are you on either side in, in Bucks Bulls? I'm staying away from that one. Okay, so we're all staying away on 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 sure. Bucks Bulls. Uh, Ra and Brandon have Heat. I'm sorry, Hawks first first half. Let's do first half. And let's do first quarter. Let's add first quarter to that as well. In first quarter, yeah, uh, I've got Hawks full game plus 106 on the money line. Um. Raheem is going to take the Pelicans on the series, but is not going to bet game three. Brandon likes Cam Johnson unders. Uh, oh, track our picks because sometimes overs. like we'll we'll spend another day and then we'll come around on these. Mm-hmm. Cam uh, Johnson overs. Cam Johnson overs overs overs. Cam Johnson overs. Sorry, sorry, mm-hmm. sorry, sorry. Cam Johnson overs. And I think we're are we on on Brook Lopez under points of rebounds assists? Yeah, I, I think we're we're leaning there. I don't uh, like we'll that. Light see bet. what the number is. Yeah, light, yeah, light bet. So you can check that out with the props angle as well. Download the Action Network app and you can track all of our picks as well as get up to the second information. Uh, Mm -hmm. Check out the Action Network YouTube page. I did a big video on the Mavs Jazz series, which I think you'll find interesting and informative even after uh, game three tonight when we're recording this. It'll be tomorrow when you hear this episode. So for Raheem Palmer. Before we go, before we go, take some Mavs futures. Yeah, that's the, I knew that we're going to talk about this tomorrow. We're going to do a big thing on, on futures tomorrow and the impact of these injuries. But I know like Roz is hitting Mavs as much as he possibly can right now. Um, uh, let me do one, one question here. One question. Based on what we said, I have a hundred dollar free bet and I like to have a little fun. I either can play Pelicans series or bull series. The numbers are about the same. We've talked about it already. You're placing your hundred dollar free bet on a series. One word, bulls or Pelicans. Raheem? Pelicans. Matt? Bulls. Yeah, I'm Bulls. <laughs> God, I hate injuries. Oh, thanks my for, God. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you guys again tomorrow with another episode. Let's get buckets.